Okay, let's start again. We should have called him Damien. Discussion of the impact of Henry Archer's early years on potential crimes of the future. Um, I'm no expert on this, but I've, I've um, just thought it'd be fun to see the pros and cons, what evidence there is about him. Um, just to say, the background photographs are all by my sister, who's currently doing a project on domestic violence through photography called An Unkindness of Ravens. So, the facts. Um, in my mind, these are the facts we need to consider. He was five when he uh, witnessed, potentially witnessed the stabbing and was then deprived of his mum for about five months. He saw coercive controlling action and was bullied by his stepfather. Then Rob left. Gideon Myson was very nearly taken and poor Henry wasn't part of the deal. Um, traditional attachment theory says that a child that doesn't have a beneficial bond with their mother may become an offender. Henry was denied his mum for a time and he was then deprived of Rob. Rob just, nobody talked about him. Nobody said where he'd gone. Poor Henry. Um, this could create affectionless psychopathy. So he might not be able to display um, affection, might act on impulse and not have regard for his own behaviour. Um, more recent research states that if the initial bonds are good, it doesn't really matter whether it's mum, dad or granny. But probably best not Tom, that the attachment happens with. <laughs> Rob bullied Henry. We all heard the, <coughs> OK, Daddy, I'm sorry, Daddy, as Rob ordered Henry about. Rob was a bully when teaching Henry to play cricket, and he was transmitting his values to Henry. What will tip the balance? Will the experiences with Rob and the tinned custard change Henry forever? <laughs> there we go. Much of the, re of the research um, states that it's the first relationship that is important. Okay, so much of a child's future well-being is established with this bond, and researchers um, assert that separation alone does not play as important a role in emotional development as previously thought. Ainsworth had this theory of maternal deprivation, and that's our starting point for looking at Henry. There was no lack of maternal care. Obviously, it was a dramatic birth. They are all dramatic in Soapland. But this didn't seem to affect Henry. Maternal care was not distorted, as he um, Helen didn't ne neglect her little devil. However, discontinuity may have been an issue. Although Henry's very close and loving relationship with his grandparents, with Tom, and other members of the huge extended family allowed him to maintain equilibrium when Helen was banged up. Helen's very close bond in the early years with Henry will also support his stability. Although we've got to consider Helen's previous mental ill health, her anorexia, that could be a symptom of resolved, unresolved issues from her childhood. When you look at the issue of separation, the critical period appears to be about two and a half years old. And that, to my mind, was around the time, two and a half, three years old, when um, Rob appeared on the scene. He was being quite normal then. Then... He got a little bit creepy, but we had Helen, Pat and Tony all being consistent in their care. Attachments are affected by the degree to which the parent is sensitive to the needs of the child. Now, whilst Rob was a bit dodgy in that area, this could be interpreted as the steadiness or boringness of Pat and Tony. So they do have a use in their boringness. Um, so that could have been a beneficial effect. Much of the literature gives us Lots of things with one hand, with visions of Henry coming to mind, bloody knife in hand, only to be dashed with the wholesome effect of Pat and Tony on the other. So we know that Henry's needs were likely to have been met as an infant. He wasn't left to cry. Was Clive Horribin? And that there's a research project. Was Rob? Did Ursula feed on demand? That's, I think, the course of the issues with Rob. Changed. 
Um, Helen was a good mum to Henry. I know that's contentious, but for me, he was. She, he had a great mum. Um, he had consistency, sensitive observation, trust, and a great environment and freedom. These strong, effective ties will lead to lower levels of delinquency, hopefully. Henry will consider the feelings and views of Helen and his extended family before going on a rampage, and so less likely to become an axe-wielding maniac. Um, and not only his family, Susan, by her own admission, is Central Intelligence Ambridge, and will report back any dis- misdemeanours. Ambridge is small enough for anything that Henry does to get back home will have face consequences. And I grew up in a very small village um, where everybody found out exactly what I'd been up to. So, I honestly feel that Helen is a nurturer. I know we all criticise her for fobbing off the boys onto other people, but isn't that what busy working parents do? You find somebody that can pick up your child? Um, But she does focus on the boys. She was really sensitive, I think, to Henry's needs. I lost count of the times that Helen had to wait for Henry to finish playing in the mud or watching the pigs. He had absolute uninterrupted time to play, which is important in building self-esteem and trust. Erickson's psychosocial stages give us a clue as to the potential outcomes for each stage of development. Trust is vital up to 18 months, and we know that Henry had that because Rob wasn't on the scene. Then to three years, autonomy is key. Henry, I would argue, did have autonomy. He did call the shots quite a lot of the time. The next stage is when Hen- um, Rob arrives. Henry was in the period where Erickson's conflict is initiative versus shame and doubt. Did Rob tip the balance towards shame and doubt? If so, Henry might have been affected by Rob's values. He was expect- exposed to Rob's criticism when playing cricket. I don't know if you'll remember those horrible scenes. And when poor Thomas the Rabbit was binned. So thank you, Helena Bennett, if you're here, for reminding me of the name of Thomas the Rabbit. <laughs> Children acquire their beliefs and standards of behaviour from the people that are their role models. Are the effects of Rob's influence on Henry being seen in the aggression Henry's shown towards Kira in karate and in the naughtiness he's demonstrated at school? Henry may have avoidant attachment, so he might have issues with intimacy. Um, He could have a vision of the perfect relationship. Seeing any parallels with Rob here, and be hypercritical of partners um, and avoid attachment. So you can contrast this a little bit with um, some of the apron strings which haven't been cut in Bridge Farm. So we've still got Tom running back to mum and dad all the time, and Helen too. Um, So if Henry had avoidant attachment due to trauma, he's more likely to become competitive and belligerent. Um, And are we seeing this come out in the karate? The criticism of this view is that the quality of parental caregiving has a greater influence, especially with boys. So we've got the wholesomeness of the Archer clan there. Um, But the impact of family strain is greater on boys than girls. And this, combined um, with the effects and exposure to um, the domestic violence and delinquency risk factors, makes Henry more vulnerable. However, I'd argue that the Walton-style wholesomeness at Bridge Farm cancels this out. The amount of time that Henry was influenced by Rob may be key in whether he descends into violent offending behaviour. Um, offending behaviour by the father can predict delinquent behaviour of the sons. This risk is heightened the longer the boy is with the asocial role model. Um, I don't think Henry was with Rob long enough. I may be wrong. Have we seen any signs of these patterns of behaviour to date, apart from Henry being horrid to Kira. 
One of the warning signs is uncontrolled temper at the age of three. Um, Another is being callous between the ages of seven and 12. So I think we need to be looking out for wasp factory style violence and cruelty in future episodes. Extensive periods of humiliation have been found to be present in the childhoods of several adult serial killers. Now, Henry was humiliated by Rob. This may have led Henry feeling powerless. Those who ended up as serial killers were unable to retaliate against those who had caused them humiliation and chose to harm animals instead. Henry began wetting the bed during this period. And Eric, the charity supporting parents and carers of children who have enuresis, wrote an article, Why is Henry wetting the bed on the archers? It considers that Henry's bedwetting is linked to anxiety relating to changes and stresses in life. He'd just started school, his mummy's about to have another baby, and both parents are emotionally on edge. However, the author does acknowledge that domestic violence can be a trigger as it causes heightened levels of fear and anxiety. Now, some researchers link enuresis and future violence, associating the humiliation connected to bedwetting to finding a victim, torturing animals, and then fellow humans. What's going to happen to Kira? Further risks to Henry include his exposure to domestic violence and coercive control. And you can see in Rob's relationship with his father and the way that Bruce treats other people, controlling behaviour, criticism, disapproval. And Henry was at a vulnerable age for this when Rob started to get into his um, stride. How do I go back on this? Just the other arrow back to this. Sorry, that one. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, parenting styles have got an influence on um, adult behaviour of children. The optimum um, style is authoritative, so a balance between maintaining boundaries but being flexible. Rob's style was authoritarian, very high in control, very little warmth. He was strict, little flexibility and punishment. Um, in some cases, autonomy was forced but punished in other cases. Henry was so scared of Robert times that he did obey without question. Yes, Daddy. Sorry, Daddy. The legacy for Henry will be having low self-esteem. He could easily be led into potential criminal behaviours. He may have low self-worth and a passive interest in his own life. He could be unable to take responsibility for his own actions or be unable to take decisions. He'll go with the flow and be the kid that eats horse feed or mealworms to gain approval from his peers. He could be anxious about change and trying new things, which could lead to a cycle of doubt and self-esteem. He might have issues with his peers. He might not be able to make friends. We don't hear an awful lot about play dates at the moment with Henry. Um, all we generally hear about is him being quite mean to Kira. I'm worried for Kira in the future. Um, <laughs> Is he going to be able to commit in relationships? Do we see any parallels between his mum and his uncle in that? So, in summary, yes, he'll become a violent bully. Parenting from Rob will have transmitted Rob's values. So he's seen how to become a bully from Rob. Boys more likely to develop avoidant attachment and they'll become more competitive and um, aggressive. He's been exposed to domestic violence and other risk factors of delinquency and he's more likely than a girl to reproduce the um, behaviours he's seen. There's been inconsistency in parenting styles um, so that can cause emotional blunting. He's also likely to have low self-esteem and um, become a bully because of what he's seen. Role modelling. <laughs> this, this does scare me. Who is Henry going to have as a role model? Tom, businessman of the year. <laughs> Rob, the bully. Um, but hopefully Johnny, lovely Johnny. Um, Henry was in a key developmental stage for primary socialisation, and unfortunately his main influence was Rob. Not psycho. 
So, will he be as normal as an archer can be? (laughs) The research states that he didn't need to be surgically attached to his mum... Um, to develop a secure attachment. So those, those years with her, or months with her banged up, hopefully shouldn't make a difference. His upbringing is not only down to his mum, but very much down to his grandparents, who have a very boring, consistent influence. Attachment can happen later in life. Um, they were securely to ha- attached to start off with, um, and he went to his childminder. From what I remember, he went to his childminder without a fight. Um, and these strong affective ties should um, give low levels of delinquency he's not only being brought up in a loving extended family he's being brought up by Ambridge whatever he does is going to get reported back Um, and then although saying that um, I was very disappointed with him kicking Johnny in the doodahs the other week (laughs) because I was expecting a bit more punishment than that. So that does this kind of counter what I'm talking about. Um, and also consistent primary socialisation for most of his life is really powerful for his moral compass. So that is Henry. What we need to look out for, casual bullying, lack of remorse or guilt. He didn't feel guilty about ruining Johnny's chances of becoming a dad. Um, Superficially charming, having a short temper, intimidating smaller kids, and torturing small animals. So, there you go. That's whether he'll become a psychotic axe-wielding maniac or just boring like the rest of his family. (laughs) There. I personally wonder whether the Chester Durbinville story is happening here with Henry as the Alec Durbinville, then Jack as the sort of angel Claire of the land, and then maybe it's Kira who will see sacrifice at the top of Lakey Hill <laughs> <laughs> in, this, in this saga. Let's go to some questions. Oh, sorry, right, at the back first. Hello. Um, I've been a family court judge for 25 years now, and everything you've said is totally accurate. And sadly, every day uh, in my court, including yesterday, I see children suffering in the way that he's suffering. Um, the only missing factor, of course, is the genetic effect of um, on psychology. We know his mother's genetic predispositions, and of course, the missing factor, neither he nor anybody else knows. What was the psychological makeup of his biological father? Yeah. It was Ian. <laughs> <laughs> if only he'd be far more stable. Um, and I'm currently trying to develop with CAFCAS a psychological service for children like this that we'll offer for three through the courts. Whether we'll succeed or not, I don't know. But you know, this sort of disturbed and I'm going to say middle-class child, is the, the growth of those numbers is exponential. I just can't, you know, I've seen it throughout my career, and getting worse by the year. And we really need to do some marches in a way, is pointing it out, and particularly the effects of a domestic violence abuser. Thank you. I remember when um, all of this happened with Rob and Henry and Helen, um, there was talk about counselling for both Helen and Henry, and it never happened because Pat, very self-righteously, as far as I remember, said that it could all be dealt with within the family. She was so wrong. I don't know why nobody insisted that Henry, at least, should have had some professional help following the ghastly circumstances that she found himself. I think that's, that's very much the middle-class way of doing things, isn't it? Um, plus, Pat, Pat can do anything. Um, but this was discussed, I think, on last week's Dumpty Tum, but um, really well. And, um, yeah, he should be having some counselling. Helen definitely needs... She's, she's going to be a single, sad old lady unless she gets some counselling. But there's, there's hope. <laughs> 
I think Lee, Lee would be great because he's got the training, he's um, the physiotherapist, so he'll have some psychology, he'll have understanding about trauma, um, but obviously Helen shot herself in the foot with him, and, you know, will we see him again? Hi, um, yeah, the social worker in me is curious about what went on between Rob and Henry that we don't necessarily know about, and whether or not um, that will come to light in the future and its impact on how he is. I mean, I'm thinking particularly about sexual abuse, but we clearly we don't know. For me, it's an unanswered question. So this is going to sound callous now, but did you uncover anything that would explain why Henry has kept his total voice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole of the paper. <laughs> Um, for, for boys than for girls to suffer this in, in some ways and I wondered whether that was to do with um, socialisation and different expectations of different genders or whether it was like a biological difference if you know um, I didn't go that deeply into mm -hmm. it I imagine that it's a bit of both yeah. um, but also with boys and hormones and aggression it's possibly linked to that so when Henry gets to, how old is Henry? Eight. 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 So he'll he'll be having some some hormone release. Um, so he should naturally start to get a bit more aggressive. But I'm just waiting for him to start torturing animals. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned lack of play dates and that sort of thing. With, um, and my concern has been quite some time now the fact that Helen seems unable to let Henry go anywhere except um, you know, stay at home with Pat and Tony and, and Tom. And only when there's been the offer of him going to stay overnight with somebody or just to go and play, she's not accepted it at all. So it's, you know, it's her inability to let him go. Is it her lack of trust of him and what he's likely to do? Or is it her lack of self-esteem and, and the feeling that only she can look after him or the very close family? And I, and I really worry about the long-term effect on them of not being able to go and make relationships with other children and, and other adult groups. That's, that's interesting because then you've got Pip who will fob um, Rosie off onto passing strangers. So, yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Um, when do we think Rob's going to come back? <laughs> do you think he's Tim in disguise? <laughs> We've actually um, concentrated on the sociological um, effects um, and behaviour effects of, of um, domestic abuse in the children. But the, I, I think in fact we need to um, or we need to address the increasing evidence of the, the physical effects. And we haven't actually looked at the potential for Henry to develop really quite severe psychological and, and mental health problems in his teenage years. And also there is some gathering evidence of, um, around the actual physical um, uh, detrimental effects in adulthood and on chronic disease of child abuse. So I don't think we'd like to uh, add that as well. The Ambridge Fairy will cure that because the Ambridge Fairy cured Daniel's um, juvenile diabetes, um, arthritis. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> Um, can I just ask you, in the next couple of years, do you think Henry will turn on Jack? Yes. Because yes. yes. you yes. mentioned Kira, obviously. Yeah. Oh. Her a bit. That'd be quite fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just wonder where Helen will fit in that, because she's emotionally unraveling at the moment. She only needs one Monty cow to drop dead and she'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
there'll probably be adopted by Adam and Ian, and Helen will be carted off to an institution, and um, Adam and Ian will forget about what's the face in Hungary having their baby. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you very much. Show of hands. Show of hands, there's something definitive. Is Henry going to turn out to be evil? Yes.